Math is one of those polarizing subjects where you either love it or you can't even bear it. Luckily, I'm from the first group. I really love math and enjoy doing problems. I like how it's applicable to our everyday life. It all started in a family gathering. Our family had a tradition where everybody meets at my great-grandparents' house every weekend. One of my relatives and his wife both majored in math. So there was a part of this evening where they have to say a joke or a pickup line that has something to do with math. As a five years old, I know nothing about math other than numbers and basic addition and subtraction. But it happened that whenever numbers were mentioned, people laughed. So I ended up adapting this habit because numbers are really fun. So math for me started as a joke. And it's still a joke. Not so funny though. I mean, look how these cute figures go from this to this. That's not really fun. Well, because of this great love to math, physics, chemistry, except titration, I joined some re research throughout my high school years. One of the research that I've done is about density matrix. And a subject that we discussed has this fancy name, quantum entanglement. An example about that was black and white holes. So there is a theory that suggests black and white holes are connected. However, the comparison between those two actually blew my mind. Let me tell you why. So a black hole is something that pulls. In a stricter term, it pulls from a place that you don't want to be near. In this term, or in this case, near refers to the event horizon. The event horizon is a name that we give to a region of space-time beyond which everything that falls into it never comes back, not even light itself. This is contrasted by a white hole. A white hole literally pushes you away by spinning material against you. So while a black hole has an event horizon that once you get close enough, you will never come back, a white hole has an event horizon that you can't even get close to. So I remember that we were told that the gravitational force of a black hole is equal to positive infinity, while that of a, black, of a white hole is equal to negative infinity. And I was so confused. How come that positive and negative infinity met at the same point? Usually we know that positive infinity lies really far to the right, while negative infinity lies really far to the left. But in this case, they met at the same point. So I had to figure out which one is correct because I can't just ignore this fact. And in order to do that, I had to find the numerical value for infinity, or a number that represents infinity. Well, it wasn't possible at the beginning because we don't have a specific amount of positive numbers that we have to add up to find the value for infinity. When we think about infinity, we think about a really big number that keeps on increasing as we move to the right. But is that actually the case? Well, let's do some math. Here we have a diversion series that has all the positive numbers, from 1 till infinity. I'm going to rearrange those numbers without changing anything. So the first number that we have is 1. I'm going to rewrite 1 without changing it. And then the next three numbers are 2, 3, and 4. If you added those up, you're going to get 9. And then for the next three numbers, you're going to get 18. And then for the next three numbers, 27, and then 36, and then 45. I don't know if you've noticed, but 9 is a common divisor for all those numbers. So I'm going to factor out a 9. And we will have s is equal to 1 plus 9 multiplied by 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 till infinity, which is the same series that we had on the top. So instead of writing all the positive numbers again, I'm going to rewrite s. So we have s is equal to 1 plus 9 multiplied by s. Well, as if we're finding a value of x, let's find the value of s. First, we need to subtract 9s from both sides of the equation. So we will have 1s minus 9s, which is equal to negative 8s, is equal to 1. And then we need to divide both sides of the equation by negative 8. And we will have s is equal to negative 1 over 8. What does that mean? That means that the sum of all the positive numbers is equal to negative 1 over 8. Doesn't make any sense, right? Well, mathematically, it's correct. And to make you comfortable, I'm going to tell you that my calculus teacher is sitting right there. So I can't mess up the math. <laughs> However, if, and if it's mathematically correct, that makes no sense. How come that positive numbers, if we added them up, are going to give us a negative number? And how are we adding really big numbers to end up with 
negative 1 over 8. That makes no sense. In 1919, an elementary school math teacher called Ramanujan was sitting there chilling, doing nothing, and instead of doing any other thing, he decided to do some math. So he did something that is similar to what we did, but a bit more complicated, and I bet nobody here would like to do more math. So he got infinity is equal to negative 1 over 12. Nobody believed it made sense, but there was a scientist called Hendrik Casimir who was studying the negative energy. His equations had lots of infinities. And to solve this problem, he took Ramanujan's value for infinity, which is negative 1 over 12, and plugged it in his equations, and got a value for the negative energy, which was later tested by a professor at Yale, and was found to be valid, which means that Ramanujan's value for infinity, which is negative 1 over 12, is valid as well, which means that infinity is a negative number. Well, what does that mean? If that has something to tell, then it has something to tell about the arrangement of numbers. We always assume that numbers are moving in a straight line, going from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, where negative and positive numbers meet at zero only and never meet again. However, if we were to take a look at the universe, we can see that everything is moving in a circle. Alcatrons are moving in a circle around the nucleus, the planets are moving in a circle around the sun, the solar system is moving in a, in a circle around the galaxy, the galaxy is moving in a circle, even us, as humans, we think in a circular way. So how come that numbers, which represent math, which is the language of the universe, are the only thing that is moving in a straight line? That makes no sense, right? I believe that numbers are moving in a circle, starting from zero and then moving all the way to positive infinity, where positive and negative infinities meet, and then numbers go all the way back to zero. Well. We talked about black holes and numbers, but who cares? I mean, we've been doing math since the beginning of history, and it has been working out. Well, right now, every single one of us has some plans in mind for what they want to do in their life. I'm not talking about a job or a major only, but about a person you want to be, a trait you want to possess, or an idea you want to share. While some of us have taken the right path and have started moving and doing whatever it takes to accomplish this goal, Many have taken the wrong path. Mistakes happen, but it's really hard once we realize that we spend so much time and effort over nothing, and that it's going to take us more time and more effort to go back to the beginning and then start moving into the opposite direction. However, once we realize that all paths in our universe are circular, and that instead of going all the way back and then moving into the opposite direction, you can keep moving forward and into the opposite direction because you're moving in a circle. You don't have to go all the way back. You have to keep moving forward, because moving in one direction is going to end up in the other direction. There is no wonder that failure is the beginning of success, and that mistakes are what teach us the real lesson. In fact, making a mistake is, an a, real, is a real accomplishment if it was accompanied with learning from this mistake, because that what takes you to the other side of the circle. Even hard times, we all go through hard times, but if we believed in math and in the fact that nothing lasts forever, it gives us some hope. But that applies to good times as well. Nothing lasts forever, so just enjoy the moment. And don't forget to enjoy watching people's faces when you prove to them that infinity is a negative number. And one last thing. If someone ever was to tell you that they love you till infinity, don't get so excited. <laughs> Because they either don't do math, which is a big red flag, or <laughs> it's either this or they know exactly what they're talking about. 